Let's see. Map check. Mic check. Waving about your hands check. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Hello, everybody. If you're tuning in right now, you're watching the Asmony Digital Twitch stream. This is going to be about 90 minutes of the game, Sai, the game which I've played a few times here on the stream, and am always happy to revisit. Because you know what? It's kind of fun. Let me just make sure I've got the, the ads are running. Over on Twitch, they're telling me something about, oh god, about a game called FIFA. Have you? Have you I've, it means nothing to me. I've got my tea, green tea, thank you for asking, very important ingredients for a, a successful live stream. Uh, and I have got a working copy of OBS, and it looks like we're live, live on the stream. Hello, say hello if you're in the chat, shout as usual, because I'm going to be here for the next 90 minutes or so, indulging myself uh, in a quick game of Scythe. I say kick quick, you know, these things they take time, but uh, it's time well invested. Uh, if you've never played the game before, then there'll be this will be something of an introduction to you. But we've done this a few times on the channel, so I'm hoping that you know regulars will have some clue what kind of game this is, and will probably be offering me advice if nothing else. Uh, if you haven't ever played it before, then this is one of these engine building games in which you have to play the role of a country or faction attempting to dominate this hex-based board and ideally make their way all the way to the center, take control of this factory uh, and just get the most prestige points, victory points, whatever you want to call them. I think we're after 15 in total as a rule and you can grab them by competing uh, against other players and completing certain tasks here. Uh, we'll be going through which ones you can successfully acquire in order to win over the course of the stream. But in the meantime, if you are watching out there in Twitch land, then shout yourself out in the chat room. They're a friendly bunch. They won't bite or anything like that. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm going to have a look at my potential first turn. So those of you who've seen me play this before know the score, but each turn comprises of a maximum two actions. In this case, when you start out at the beginning of the game, you can usually only perform one action because that's all you have the assets to do. The first thing you need to start do is getting workers in and then collecting and building certain assets, generating them along the lines that we've got steel here, we've got some wood here, we've got oil drums here, all of which go into creating different types of troops, different types of, in some cases, mechs and tanks, which are these kind of walkers that trudge their way across the map and engage in combat, uh, or build things like monuments and other bits which will gain you certain boosts and bolsters as you go along. Food, you need to grab some food because it's nice to eat now and then. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cover it as we get to it. But in the meantime, uh, make yourself at home, make yourself known in the chat room uh, and we will carry on. So, my first turn, I've got the option to immediately bolster some power if I want to. I can go over here and try and produce on the tiles that I've claimed. We haven't claimed any tiles at the moment, so that's entirely pointless. We have the option to gain coins or move characters about. Or we can do an action which is we can trade. So at the moment, everyone starts out with one worker on each of the tiles that are next to their little home base thing over here. Uh, in my case, I'm playing, uh, I think Saxony, right? Yeah, Saxony, who are the warmongering psychos. They have perks based around building loads of mechs, because they're mental. Uh, and so I'm going to be indulging in that a little bit uh, over the course of the next, ooh, 90 minutes or so mech creation. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to produce. That's the first thing I'm going to do here because I'm standing on a barrel and I'm standing on this guy. What I want to do ultimately is I want to get enough workers in order to max out my worker uh, limit. I think mm, I think actually what I might do first is move. I'm going to move both my guys from here onto the work tab. So I can choose this character here and move them over there. There we go. Drag him there, and then drag him there. Bosh. That's my two moves completed. I can't do anything else, so I'm ending my turn and moving on to the next players. I'm playing the AI in this case. Two competitors right now. I might grab more later. We'll see how it goes. Back to my turn. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce, because I want more workers. This is the workers tab, and what will happen is I will get one worker for every worker which is currently placed in this hex. You can see right here that it produces workers. I've got two workers there. So here we go. 
it produced BAM. I've now got four workers. If I do that again, not the next turn, but the turn after, because it'll be greyed out, I will have a maximum of eight workers, and that will gain me a prestige point. You can see right here, getting a maximum of eight of these gets me a star. And it's these stars, I think I need, you know, what to do? Six, six in total. These are what's gonna win me or lose me the game. Yep. Good T. Okay, end turn, that's all I can do. So my guy over here, he's moving a character. He's already produced, I think, an oil barrel or something. Yeah, he's produced an oil barrel. He's going to use that to upgrade. He's immediately got an upgrade. My guy's produced another worker and an oil barrel as well. That's it. I'm doubling down on the workers thing here. You'll notice this is now grayed out because I can't do the same action twice in a row. I have to wait one turn and then do it in the next turn. So this will be grayed out for the time being. I've got the option to move or I've got the option to bolster and power or do something else. So I don't want to move anyone else away. I want to produce another four workers straight off the bat. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase something. I want to trade to get some assets because I think what I'm going to do is start to build a bunch of mechs. And oh, Chibi Marcus is here. Hello. How are you doing? Forgot the stream was coming today. You know what? So did I. Nearly forget that as well. Um, apologies if it looks a little bit on the slightly flame, frame rate dropping side. It's not the smoothest today for some reason. I think there's an internet issue. Um, but uh, I hope you can see me all regardless. So it's important. I'm just going to pause that here. Maybe that will speed things up a bit. And close that just in case. So we have maximum frame rate. Good news is I'm getting a new PC delivered uh, at the end of this week come next week. So it's going to be massively pimp. Uh, and I've even treated myself to look. Guys, look. A proper mouse. How about that? I've got myself my first decent mouse uh, of my life, and it's it's quite nice. It's, it's a lovely upgrade, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, hang on, what was I going to do here? I was going to either gain popularity or gain some strength. I'm going to gain popularity. This is what I'm going to do. Pay one coin. I've only got four. Let's gain popularity. Bam. So I gained a bit of love there. I'm going to need that love, that popularity, and some of that power as well, uh, and I need to levy that into doing certain actions later on. So... That's why I spent the cash. Now, I can produce. If I go down here, I need to pay one of my power. I'm going to be out of power, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to produce on my territories. I'm going to bosh down eight. And now I've created my full maximum eight workforce. And if you look here, immediately I've got one star on the board. How about that? End my turn. Streaking ahead. Now, I'll probably get lost <laughs> way behind in a bit. But for the time being, I'll take it. Right. So now I need to start moving characters around. So I want to ideally... See, it depends what I want to start doing. So if I want my engine to make mechs, I need to bring them over here and plonk them on the steel. If I want them to start creating upgrades... I think it's upgrades for oil, is that right? Yeah, upgrades for oil. I need to move them down here. However, at the moment, I can only move two units per turn. So I'm going to bosh... Uh, these, this guy and this guy over here. So send you that way, and you that way as well. The next turn I'll try and produce, but I need to get some uh, some power back. Fortify my power. Um, my bear guy is zooming in and immediately upgrading stuff. And the snow folk are up the top. Now they can uh, jump over. Did he create a monument? Did he? No, he didn't. I think they have the power, these guys, to cross water. Because I'm down here, everyone's isolated by this little uh, lake slash river that kind of separates them from the center of the map. So we need to find a way to cross it. And the way to cross that is to either build a monument, which will allow me to create a tunnel from here to any of these. One, two, three, four, five, and so on like subway tunnel points on the map, or I can build myself an amphibious mech, and that will allow me to put troops inside the mech and then hop across the water later on. It's pretty sweet. I'm going to go ahead and not create this turn because in order to create, I need strength, and I don't have any strength. I'm running seriously low. So we're going to fortify ourselves, bolster power. Bang. So I've paid some cash uh, and I've got two power back. This guy's already built a mech. Let's put some people inside it. This dude's producing oil barrels. 
and using the oil to pay for, I think an upgrade there. Yeah, he bought an upgrade. I've kind of doubled down on the workforce thing. I could really do with uh, making some mechs at this point. I think mechs and upgrades will be the, be the core thing. So I'm going to move two characters down here. And on the next turn, I'm going to produce. So move these guys. Confirm. I'm going to move two of you. One down here. Come on, down here. And one down here. There we go. And I'll move. And the next turn I'm going to produce, and that production is going to create uh, two metal bits and two oily bits. And then in another round I'll be able to buy an upgrade and I'll be able to buy a new mech as well. It's fun playing this game with a little bit more knowledge. At the beginning there's a lot to take on. It is the same with a lot of these engine building games, that they do require a little bit of effort on your part in order to work out you know, what all the rules are and all the intricacies of, of what needs to be done. And of course... Even though I'm choosing this particular way to play it, I'm going to try and build mechs and upgrades. That's going to be my tactic. There are like a million different ways you can try and approach this, and there's no guarantee that what I'm doing is the right thing to do. It's probably not, in fact. And yet, here I go doing it anyway. So let me just produce right now. I can produce on up to two territories, and that's fine. I'm going to produce on these two territories. So bang, bang. I've immediately got myself two steel and two oil. Enter. Now, I won't be able to produce for another turn or so, so I might use the next action in order to buy an asset. I can trade if I want to, although I don't really have any cash left, so we'll see how that goes. I'm noticing for the most recent update there are some new visual A uh, UI elements which are popping up to show me what the enemy is doing, which is super handy. If you're ever unsure in this game, if you've played the board game version, you have to just remember, but in the digital version they give you a nice history of all of your moves listed down the left hand side here. Very, very handy. So I've got two bits of steel, or oil, or iron, or whatever it's called. Metal, just metal. And uh, two barrels of oil. I want more. I want more oil and more of that. I can't produce again this round, so I am going to go ahead and trade. It will cost me one gold, which is all I have left. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to buy an extra barrel of oil here, bang, and I can only do this on, I guess, the one location, which is slightly annoying, uh, and I'm going to use the extra bit of steel here as well. And that gives me enough to purchase one upgrade and one mech in my next round. This guy's already flaunting his two mechs. Of course, they've got more assets than me, but at the moment, they don't have as many stars as me, although they have a lot more money. See, they've focused their engine on trying to generate things like resources, or I've, I've kind of doubled down on the workers. Which I tend to do at the beginning. It works sometimes. <laughs> Not all the time. Uh, we'll see how it goes this time. I also need to get my main character out here and hit that tab. You can see that little coin right there. That'll give me a little, a little skill, a little ability. Uh, or kind of random event, effectively. So, having now done that, I'm going to go ahead and perform an action. Now, I can't perform any either one of these, annoyingly, because I don't have any cash. So I'm going to use this turn just to gain one coin, and then I can perform the next action and get some money back. It's annoying that I have to wait this turn in order to do it, but I've kind of left my bank in a bad situation now. Once I've got this, what I'll do is I'll create some uh, an upgrade here, and it'll actually give me three cash, three coins to play with next turn, and I'll be in a much better situation, and I'll also generate another two coins from making a mech, so I'm a little bit behind my opponents when it comes to the upgrades. But who's got one victory point on the table? Me, that's who. So, you know, shut up, by the way. Okay, let's upgrade, shall we, boys? We're going to uh, fortify ourselves so I need to bolster that power buzzing and I also need to upgrade I'm gonna confirm now we can choose what we want to upgrade we're gonna use one two three bits of oil and then look at this this is nice it gives you the actual text now to tell you what to do so I can upgrade something from the top and something from the bottom I can either bolster the amount of power I get by playing coins I can bolster the amount of stuff I produce very nice I can also uh, bolster the amount of people I can move in one go, or the amount of love 
or popularity that I get if I choose to pay a coin. In this case, I'm going to bolster the amount that I produce because pr the production is good. And I'm going to make it cheaper for me to upgrade stuff. I think that's the way to go. There we are. So now I've got three coins in the bank. And now every time I hit produce, I produce three of the assets on every tile, not just two. This is good. Hmm. My opponent doing a bit of a trade. The guys up north are moving. See, they're jumping using that tunnel thing. He sent a worker all the way over here uh, to go get some food assets, some bread action. And they get combat cards for that. Combat cards are used unsurprisingly when you get into combat. And uh, they give you pluses, bonuses that you can then use on your opponents. I've got uh, three three point ones and one five point one down here. But uh, we'll get on to ruckuses later. Now I'm going to move and I am going to produce some stuff. And once the production is done, I'm going to build a mech. Because now we're in a pretty good situation. This guy, I don't like him hovering right here. I might have to try and kill these these goons uh, and claim all his oil. Uh, that sounds like a familiar foreign policy, doesn't it? Political. Okay, so let's produce. Costs a lot to do it, but it's kind of worth it. So... Bam. Bam. There we go. I think actually it allows you to produce on three tiles rather than produce three of everything. Yeah, so that's what it allows you to do. I don't have a third resource, so that's fine. I can kind of end production here. I can produce more workers, but I've already produced my maximum allotment. So I'm going to end my production section. Beep. And then I move straight over to mech building. It's going to require one, two, three. And now... I can build one of my four mech types, each of which has different abilities. I'm going to start with River Walk. I'm going to pop him right here. And then I will be able to load my four workers into here and send them somewhere else. I can River Walk them right over, grab some wood, grab some bread, kick these guys' asses, whatever I fancy. Enter. Right. I forget who these guys are. Is it Polonia? Yeah. Polonia are. Massively building up their armed forces. Which is a little bit alarming, I won't lie. Sorry, I'm going to turn up the music slightly so I can hear some music. Just for that. Whoa! Too much music. Sound effects are quite loud. Uh, okay. Let us... I can do another upgrade. I'll need to pay coin, but I think it's worth it. It produces a lot of cash and some strength. We're going to do it. Bolster that power. Bang. Thank you. And cool. Nice sound effects. And we're going to uh, get ourselves another upgrade. One, two. We've got enough oil, so let's dive in here. And we can. We've already upgraded the production. Let's upgrade the bolstering ability so I can get more power if I pay some cash. And we're going to also make it cheaper to build mechs. There we go. I now know only need two bits of steel in order to build myself a mech. This is good for my long-term prospects. Lots and lots of new AI stuff since the last update. It's really nice. AI, I mean UI updates. These little uh, pop-up icons of people shaking hands and stuff like that. This is a new gloss that they've put onto the game. It's been out for a little while now. And I think it's been fairly well received by the folks who are fans of the original board game. I feel like I'd be in an okay position to sit down and play the board game now. I might find it like quite challenging. But I reckon I could do it. So, because I can't go straight back into production, I could, if I want to, produce some more stuff. I'm going to save that till the next turn. What I want to do is I want to move all of these guys over here. 
Now, I've got my river walk ability. So hang on. Let me, first of all... No, 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 no. Unclick that. I don't want to do that. I want to grab my mech. So we're going to click on my mech. And we're going to use this mech to transport four dudes at once instead of clicking them all individually uh, and trying to take them somewhere. So I can either move the characters one by one by clicking the individual dudes or I can just bulk jump them all in, which is what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to jump him across the water straight over to here. Everybody now leaps out and now I have four dudes on the wood. That's what I want because I will then be able to use that to build monuments and stuff in the future. So I'm happy with that. I can also move one more character. And you know what? I'm going to pull my my dude out. My guy and his massive wolf is stepping onto the field because I want to grab one of those coins. Like he just did. Right. That mech and the other mech has just jumped onto there. These guys are retreating all the way back to their homeland because they just got boshed by uh, Polonia. Polonia have all four of their mechs out, which means they will have one star on the board. There we go. I went for workers, they went for mechs. They've now got rec recruit bonuses there because... They've got in, uh, recruits enlisted. Now, that's something that you need food for, the bread icon. I don't have any farms yet. So I'm behind when it comes to that. But now I'm going to be able to start building monuments. And over here, where all these evil buggers are, uh, I'm going to be able to... I'm, ooh, I'm really tempted to steal that. I want all this stuff, but it means fighting these two mechs off. At the minute, I've only got the one mech, so it's a bit iffy. And there's a good chance one of them's going to jump over here and try and do me in. However, I do have a mech here. I'm sort of tempted to go straight ahead and build another mech now. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let me produce. So I've lost all my popularity doing this, but it's kind of worth it. So four and two and two. Made a load of stuff there. That's good. And now we're going to build another mech. Deploy. We're going to deploy one, two, three. Oh, sorry, two of those. Uh, we're going to choose the... Hmm, one hex per movement. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to deploy them in exactly the same place here. So, if these guys jump on me, I've got two mechs. Backing up my boys. So it's a bit more of a fair fight. Let's end our turn. This guy's bolstering power. I need to get more popularity. I've spent all my popularity. Which is problematic. Everybody hates me is what I'm saying. They've got their recruit bonuses because they've been recruiting folks. These are passive bonuses that you get. Once you have some bread, you can spend it on recruiting folks. And it means that whenever you perform certain actions or your enemies perform certain actions, you also get a boost off the back of it. It's super good. But uh, I didn't have any bread things nearby. I needed to cross the water in order to get them. And these guys are sitting on all the bread. So, I need to deal with that. What to do now? I could really use some popularity. Because I don't have any. <laughs> and I will eventually need it for some stuff. But I think I can... I've got a bunch of cash. I can spend money and I, I'm going to do another upgrade while I'm here. Because it's going to get me more cash... I got enough cash anyway, and I, just, I want the power in case these two start fighting. So this will bolster myself. Three power, there you go, you see it here. And I'm also going to spend the two oil that I have. One, two. And I'm going to... Oh, on. There we go. Do my next upgrade. So what remains? The ability to move more, I'm going to do that because I could really do with some more popularity when I spend my cash. And I'm also going to make it easier to build stuff. Because I've now got four bits of wood here. And that means I can already afford two monuments. If I want to. Varne says hi. Hi Varne. Good to have you here joining us. By the way, if you're just tuning in. I'm streaming Scythe. Digital edition. This is the uh, Steam version of the board game. Which has been out for ages. And I think is a very well regarded award winning thing. 
it requires a lot of time to set up, so maybe if you don't have all the time in the world, then perhaps you might want to be interested in a playing the digital version, which sets everything up for you. Now these two mechs have just jumped over onto this area. I'm not liking the look of that one bit. Did I leave one of my hexes unguarded? I think I did. Either that, or they just jumped onto two of my workers and kicked them off. Just get, get on with the recruit bonuses. I want to see what's happened to my boys. My beautiful boys. The giant hexagons reminded you that FFG were preparing the digital version of Twilight Imperium. Oh, right, I see. I do not have any news on that one, I have to say. Yes, I have left this unprepared, so they've come over here and claimed it. I am not happy about that. This makes me rage. So, I think I'm going to have to enter Mortal Kombat with these fools. Do I have enough strength? Six strength. Hmm. I could just go ahead and build this round, in fairness. But, I don't like the sound of it. I don't like it. So. Everything here can engage in combat. All of my transport characters can engage in combat. I'm quite tempted to, to do that. Even if I spend all of my points in order to do it, it might be worth it. Because they've retired my workers back here and they're sitting pretty on all my stuff. And I'm not comfortable with it. Actually, I'm going to send my lead guy in to do it, because it doesn't really matter if he gets punted back to his home base, because it's just a tile away, so who cares. Right, you. Move. I'm going to move this guy right over here. Oi! Sorry, I forgot to confirm the movement. <laughs> move you here. I'm going to engage in the battliest battle you ever saw. I'm also going to send my other mech over here as well as backup. Who wants it? Come on! Right, so... Now, I don't know what state my opponent is in. This is probably something I should have checked beforehand. So this is the battle section. And my defender can pour as much of their power into this, plus as many of their cards as they want to. So I've got an option between 1 and 7 of my own power. I'm going to put 6 onto here. Uh, and I can use this one card here. I think they've got 5 battle cards as well. And one of those. I don't think I can play any more. So 14 is the best I can do. Is it enough? Ah! They played 15! I will accept a combat card. That is annoying. Unfortunately, I've lost a ton of power on that. Because they were able to out to beat me by one. That puts me in a really bad position. You can still take your bottom reaction. Good point, actually. I'm going to go ahead and build. Unfortunately, these guys are going to hop over and try and beat me next time. Probably succeed. So I'm going to use this to... Uh, build a monument of some kind. So I've got the option to either create myself a production windmill, I can get myself the bolster one for hearts, a one-off heart bonus, which I think I'm going to do. That's going to be the move for me. I'm going to put him here. Round of applause for that. I feel like I'm being slightly patronized by this game. I think I might get wiped out quite quickly now. I've got tons of money. Well, some money. But I just lost all my power in that fight. I'm so annoyed they beat me by one. I literally couldn't put anything more into that. Sigh. Well, they didn't choose to move. That's something. So I very, very much need some power. And some love. Power and love, please, people. And I, unfortunately, have... No control of any assets right now, apart from the ability to build. 
because these guys are sitting on a lot of my stuff. This frustrates me. So, all I can do is perform actions with a single turn. I can't take the second half of the turn. So, so I'm going to go ahead and bolster power here. And I also gained some heart for that. I forgot I gained extra heart. That's very good. Alright. I have to end my turn here now because I can't play a second action. I think this might end quite badly for me. Let's see. Recruit. Recruit. Bonuses. Alright. I can move and build. I'm not going to take anybody on right now. I just don't have the strength for it. I am going to move my characters, though. So, I'm going to move this guy out to here to back up and sort of get some control over this. I'm also going to send this guy all the way over to here because he can move two now. And here we get this card. And this is the little kind of random encounter card, if you like, that comes from the little coin that was sitting on that hex. Point the travelling convoy in the right direction, gain some popularity in cash, ask the mechs to blow a hole in the mountainside, pay two bucks to gain four metal, or, the dodgy one, pay two popularity to enlist one recruit. I don't have any popularity to pay, so that ain't going to happen. And I'm not going to gain any more metal, I'm just gonna, I want some cash and popularity. That's the one-off I'm going to gain here. I'm fine with that. Oh, hang on, no. And now I'm going to use the remaining two bits of wood I still have control of to build another monument. One that's going to give me power. I think I can only build it on here, so that's what I'm going to do. Bosh. Hmm. A lot of enlisting going on over there. Massive amounts of cash from enlisting bonuses. I don't like it. I'm currently sitting joint second with the North, the Nordic base. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Phew. All right then, you buggers. What do I need? I could do with producing. I can actually do some production now. And I could do with making another mech. Unfortunately, they're sitting on my stuff. And I can't get it back off of them. <sighs> so, I might get some popularity. Again, whatever I do this round, I can't take a second action because I don't have any stuff. I don't have any oil or wood or any more assets left because they kind of stole it all so I have to take just one half of a turn and this is what's putting me behind really you need to be able to maximize the amount you do every turn and I can't right now and it's bumming me out I could pay to trade but I could use the popularity so I'm going to do that and then end my turn Oh, that was quick. Uh, right, so I'm also going to pay some cash once again, I think. Because what I need to do is fight these guys and get them off my base. Or I could just go ahead and produce stuff. I still do have control of this and this. You know what, screw it, I'm going to produce. I can only produce on two territories right now. So that's fine. That gives me enough wood to finish off the monuments and get a control star. And it gives me enough oil to build another mech. All of which is useful. Yeah, done. Right. Our Polonia Bear is flying across the world, thanks to the monument that he built, that little archway allows him to use the underground subway systems and get to anywhere on the map that has one of these little tunnels on them. And uh, Nordics are pol I was gonna say polluting 
for producing, that's what I meant to say, of course. Now I'm going to bolster my power once more for cash. And now we're going to do another upgrade because we do have the oil to do it. One, two, we're going to use that to get, I might get some more war cards. I can move three characters at once. War cards or three characters at once. Two characters at once to move. And if I get that, it means I only need a single bit of metal per troop. I might buy the bread one. So I can do with moving these characters over here. Mech or bread, though, that's the thing. These guys are occupying, occupying all my steel right now. Let's put it here. I've got three cash at the back of that, and now it costs me only one bit of steel to make a mech, so I can make my next two and get my second star, bringing me... Oh, I was going to say in line with Polonia. Polonia are running away with it at the moment. Uh, subhuman scum, that's what I'm going to say. It's just me being bitter, don't worry. Right, what do we got? More enlisting, more cash, too much cash. Look how rich they are. See, Polonia is usually the, the team that I play as. I'm trying out Saxony. Because they always tend to be quite warmongery. Now, these are the secret objectives, as they're called. So the idea is have the same number of workers and recruits at the end of the game, or control a ter territory with your character. Exactly one mech, exactly one worker, and at least five resources. These are little secret missions, if you like, that each team member is dealt out, each faction is given a couple of these objectives, and they can only complete one of them, and if they're able to complete one of them, that's an extra star. So the same numbers of workers and recruits, I've got too many workers for that. So I could technically do this. So control the territory with the character, get a mech on it, get one worker on it, and get, a uh, get five resources at least. That's doable. So I may consider doing that, just to get the extra star. However, we've still got this big glaring problem right here. And I don't like it. Let's... Ooh. I don't know now. I want to build. Do I want to build? Or do I want to make, make some beautiful oil for that final upgrade? Screw it, I want to build. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to leave that mech on there. I'm going to send a worker over to here. I'll do some movement and then build a second monument. I think that's the way to go. Right? So yeah, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and move. We're going to load... No, I'm not going to load anything, actually. I'm just going to move two workers... over to here, and my guy. So, my guy, you head right on over there, and because I can move three units, I'm going to send you over, and you over. That way I've still got control of this hex with a mech, I've still got control of this hex with my leader, and I've still got control of this hex with another mech. So my guys are covered, my resources are covered. I'm still at a massive disadvantage because these two are sitting here, and I could bring these guys out onto the field, but for the time being, this will have to do. Now I can pay. Dosh, dosh. There we go. And we're going to. I can make a mill which acts as a worker when it's sitting on a tile, so it counts as a, an extra source of production. Or I can create the construction mine, which is the thing that lets you zoom all over the map from place to place. I think I'm going to use the worker and, and place it here. Gives me an extra bit of cash as well. Now, here we go. The fight is on, and I can't do anything about it. That mech is now jumped onto my tile, and it's going to be a battle. So, 
here's all I can do. They've got five battle cards. They can attack somewhere between one and twelve. Ooh. I really don't want to lose this, so I'm going to slam everything. I'm going all in again. So... Oh, I can only pay those two cards. I thought I'd be able to play two cards, not just one. Ah, nuts. I feel like I'm about to get battered again. If they're attacking, they're going to attack with a lot of power. And I don't think I have the power to fight them off. Do I just sacrifice this one? And keep the power for a follow-up? Because I feel like I'm going to be wasting battle cards here if I throw it all away on this guy. I feel like he's going to come out guns blazing, you know? Because he's got enough power for it. Polonia's got 11 power. They can easily max themselves out and throw in one of five combat cards like they're laughing. So I think I'm going to do nothing. Yeah, look, they had 11. They were going to they were going to trounce me anyway. I could have only done 9. So as annoying as that is, that was the right call to make. Let's sigh. So now they've claimed control of this and my monument. And they have these two areas. And I'm sad and cross. However, uh, I am going to use this to... I'm going to fortify or get a card. What do I want to do? So I can't, oh, I can produce. That's not, that's true. If I produce, I can create more wood, but that's it. I'm going to fortify myself. I need the power right now. So I am going to, I am going to claim back one of these tiles, so help me God. I mean, I'm not going to win this one, but I am going to beat Saxony in a fight. Saxony, beat Polonia. I have to try a different tactic next time. I have to go leading with a, rather than going for all the workers, try and lead with enlisting and things like that. It's the recruits that seem to be giving them all those background, background benefits, you know. That are making me furious. Tell you what, folks, get yourself a nice mouse. It rear. It's dead lovely. I've been using like wireless mouse mice, wireless mice, uh, the past two times. Just kind of cheap bundle ones with no good, with just not a standard keyboard. Just you know, cheapy bundle, twenty quid for the pair of them. Uh, and as I've got this new PC coming, I've gone no. Let's take this seriously. I'll get a proper mouse. I've gone with the Razer, Razer Abyssus or whatever it's called. Um, despite the little light, which I can take or leave. The actual response and the smoothness and the solidity, very nice indeed. It's very, very comfortable. I have a problem, you see, because I'm left-handed. So as you can see, waggling this around in the left hand. And that's a problem, because most mice are designed not to be ambidextrous. They're designed with that weird curve for you lefties. And uh, frankly, they make me sick, as you all do to my stomach. But... It's a right-handed person's world. Did you know that the original term for a left-handed person is sinister? That's the original meaning of the word sinister is left-handed. Because you right-handed people are so threatened by our superiority and galaxy brains that you have to make us sound sinister. And that is a true fact. Um, what now? I do have the ability to produce, but I really want to kick these guys off my off my plot. So, I'd like to get another battle card, because I need one of these five-point battle cards. I think it's a case of paying for them and they're randomly drawn. That's the problem. In the meantime, 
I can pay hard currency to get more people. Don't want more people. I need oil. I need people there to generate oil for, I think, the final upgrade. So I could send two of my boys over here. Or I could send these two boys back into the field, but they'd immediately get gubbed, so I can't can't take over that territory. It's no good to me at all. I could produce some stuff and then use it to... I could move characters and then use that to build. So I might do that. I can teleport over here and grab some steel if I want to. Because I'm sitting on this little thing here, I can send at least one or I can, all three of those characters actually away. It does mean leaving this exposed, this monument exposed, but still. Problem is I placed this monument on a place where I can't produce anything, <laughs> which is a bad use of that monument. As this windmill acts as one resource, you can't make any more tunnels. So that was kind of a waste of my time. Ahem. Do I want to teleport anywhere good? I could go up here, I could go over here, I could go down here. No, don't want that, don't want that, don't want that. Probably just want some oil, don't I? I'll just move. I'll move and I'll use my wood to create the final monument thing and get another point. I might as well. Move three units. So, let's say... You, over here. You, over here. You, over here. There we go. Job done. Gonna end my movement turn. It says I've still got a movement to make. Oh, I can still move this guy, but if I leave them exposed, there's gonna be a problem, and someone's gonna jump on my face, and Oh, it's just exhausting. I can get that extra card, I suppose. But I don't want to leave them on it uh, under Under Defended. Exposed. So I'm gonna use Build. One, two, and I'm gonna build my final thing, which is this, and put it the only place I can, which is here. Bam. There we go. So, finally, two stars on the board. Oh, look at Polonia running away with it. I'm joint second, but my god, they've kicked absolute ass. Tons of cash. Loads of stars. Shocking. I've sleepwalked into death. Okay, what can we do here? I don't have any iron to to pedal. Is this the time that I fortify and jump back into the battle? I've got enough power that I can max out you know, whatever power thing I've got. I think we're going to have to try and draw... Can I produce? I can produce. I'm not producing any steel, so it won't help me for this turn. I feel like I want a good battle card, because really, I, I'm, I need to kick these guys off my turf. It's doing my head in. Let's draw a combat card. Let's see what I get. One four-point card. That's alright. It's better than I had. However, I get the feeling that Polonia are poised to win this. They only need one more star. And that's it. Curtains for me. Okay. Right, I'm leaping into combat. We're moving, we're fighting. I'm gonna I would produce, but no, I'm not gonna produce. I I want I'm immediately just gonna kick ass. I'm gonna pour everything I can into reclaiming this. It belongs to me. Confirm. You. Load up. Move. And fight. Uh, actually, I can technically move this guy over here, which I might as well do. Because I want that little card thing. And I will end my movement there. Yes, I really do want to end that movement. And yes, I do want to fight. Fight! Oh, 
Oi. Click on a target because I've already done that. I've done it. Oh no, have you got a little crash going on? Can I do the last turn? Oh, I can. Good. Well, something froze up a little bit there, so I'm going to try that again. First time I've had anything remotely crash related in this. That's interesting. Everybody, get over there. You. Jump in. Fight this fool. Yeah, I really do want to do it, and I really do want to fight. Right. So, I can, I'm going to pour all seven of this. It's 0 to 12 for this guy. I can put one four-point battle card down. The only way he can beat me is with the 12. I mean, bar me having a five-point card, there's nothing else I can do here. So, this is my only chance. My only chance to win. He's put down a four. He's drawing level, which means it goes to the attacker, which means it goes to me, which means I get the victory points back. I'm going to lose. Don't get me wrong, but I needed that. You, get out of it. A modicum of dignity restored to me there. And look, my assets are back. I can build a structure, but I've built all my structures, so... No suitable worker position to complete this action. You may get the other benefits, though. Hey, I want the benefits. Benefit me up. One, two... There we go. One bit of coin for two bits of wood. Doesn't matter. I've already got it there. And I've got my third star back up here. Thank you. They're still going to win. But I'm clawing it back. Gnat Boy says, when the part, Where's the part in this game where you have to lay your thief meeple to claim a road? Ah, I think you're in a... Oh, it's just a slightly different, slightly different game there, I'm afraid. But I appreciate your enthusiasm. Uh, okay. So, let's talk seriously for a moment. I've got no oil still, <laughs> no steel, and I've got very little power now. So if I get into a fight at this point, I'm in big trouble. However, I've got three bread, not enough. I can't move this turn, so what do I do? I'm going to bolster my power, because at the moment I'm incredibly weak. That's all I can do right now. I don't have any oil or anything good like that to perform a second action. So I got to, I got to end my turn. Really, I think we're just running out the clock here until Polonia wins. The important thing is I kicked one of their mechs in the mech balls. When you think about it, that's what really matters. Me... Okay, let's... That's what, that's new as well. When you zoom right out, you can see the number of each of the resources placed over the top. That wasn't there when I was playing it in early access. Ah, very good. Clever boys. So... I really want to claim some metal back. There's nothing close to me which offers metal. The only bit of metal is occupied by a goon. And I am I don't have enough power to do anything about it right now. So I will be able to achieve something though. I've got six resources on this. And that secret hidden objective was a territory with one mech, one worker, and at least five resources. If I move three of these workers away, I can get that star, taking me up to four stars. And I've got the option to move this turn as well. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, you guys. So let's move these fools away. So I'm going to move you, you, and you. Oi. You. There we go. If I click on this... Oh, my, my character. Nuts. 
I might undo that, because it has to be the character up here. I have to get my guy all the way back. And that's going to take two turns, and it might not be worth it. I think I'm undoing that. I know that's irritating, but I'd have to jump my character all the way back to here to make that worth my time. I don't think I'm going to do it. In which case, what do I need more of? Everything. Uh, I need some steel. And bread. Steel and bread. I've got three bread down here and I need more bread. So let's produce some bread, you guys. As this doesn't produce anything anymore, let's move these folks over here. Uh, we're going to send you and you, because we don't need any more wood. We're all wooded out. And you. Leave the mech on here to protect my monument. And unfortunately, I have to end the turn, and the next turn I can produce, if there is a next turn. Where did he jump to? I just saw an enemy jump onto something that looked like it was mine. Down here. Move, move, move. Oh, hello. No, that wasn't mine. Right, fight between Polonia and the Nordic. And the Nordic's just won. And they're enlisting some folks. This game is running and running. I really thought Polonia would have would have won by now. Let's have a look. There we go. No, Nordic are, are pulling it back. Four stars for Nordic. Ooh. Maybe it's not over yet. For them, anyway. Hmm. Interesting. Right, well, we're going to go ahead and produce. I can use that to enlist in my next round. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, I guess. Produce. Uh, we're going to make some oil. We're going to make some of that. We're going to make some... Well, an oil. A single oil. There. There. How depressing. Uh, we don't have any steel though at the moment. But there is a benefit in having resources. When they're, it's all totted up at the end of the game, they count towards uh, some of your points. Oh, here we go, in fact. They've got their sixth star. About time, Polonia. Crying out loud. Right, now they add up. And this is where we can see where they really have bolstered the points. Look at this. Look at this. The multipliers. The modifiers. This is based on how many recruits you have and how many monuments you have and how much cash you have in the bank and all of that. This all gets totted up to your score, which shows you that I performed terribly in that round. Saxony, not the, not the team for me, perhaps. <laughs> see, when I played with Polonia the first time, I won. And I just got uh, destroyed by the, that lot, which is slightly annoying. Oh, well. Now, I could try and play online. It's always a bit hit and miss if I do. Actually, let's see if I can. I'm just going to try. I always give it a go now and then because it is very much dependent on who's around. Oh, there's someone else here. I hit quick play. Players. Just say two players. See if there's anything, anyone around looking for a game. Playing in stay mode. Playing go, I assume, means kind of like a turn-based thing where you can make a turn and then asynchronously bugger off and wait for someone else and then come back to it. Whereas, obviously, that's going to be no good for us. Is, is there anything in progress on my server at the moment? Maybe not. The easiest way to do this is to obviously get some friends uh, and do it with them. I think we'll go back to the normal mode. I always go in and just, just try randomly to see... We'll go with the new game. Let's uh, crank the number of bots up. Just for funsies. I'm also going to play with Polonia. My 
faithful. Plonia, see if I have any better luck. And go at random for those two. We'll use the promo cards. Do it. Now you'll notice, if you're watching carefully, that the arrangement of my assets, the turns you can take and all that, uh, and the first action and the second action will now be different because those are called player mats and the player mats can be randomized. You have different types of player mats. So sometimes when you bolster, you'll be able to also enlist recruits or sometimes when you bolster, you'll be able to build mechs depending on the order in which those two different tiles have been arranged. So you see now suddenly my production tile is over here on the far left where previously it was sitting there. My bolster is here. So it's, it's changed uh, the layout and the, the type of plays I'll be able to make during the game. So here we go. So let me see my hidden objectives. Hedge my bets is one. Have at least one upgrade, one mech, one structure, one recruit, and one of each resource at the end of your turn. Okay, so that's a bit of everything. Or monopolize the market. Control at least nine tokens of the same resource at the end of your turn. Interesting. Right, so the first thing I'll do is I can produce, but I'm only producing one thing. I think I might jump over and get some more workers like I did the first time, but I'm not going to go for the full eight this time. I'll produce next turn, I'll get four, and then I'll split them up between my two assets. See, these guys already have Two workers sitting in the same place. Got busy with a, the full full board, isn't it? We're going to be butting up against each other much more this time. See, it really annoys me that they can get, like, a full asset within the first turn. And it's like, dude, I wasn't... I had one worker here, one worker here. What do you want me to do? So, we're going to go ahead and produce. So that's going to make us two more workers. I end my turn. I'm going to divide those workers up next turn between my two available assets. He's doing a trade. I mean, that is the way to get some resources early on, it's true. But let's move. So I'm going to send got the bread option and I've got the forest. I've got the ability to make wood as well. So we're going to fire you over he here. Yeah. So move and move. And return. What do we got next? Oh, they're really doubling down on the oil. The Rusviets putting all of their money into black gold. They've already built a monument. I don't know how they managed to do that so quickly. But they did. Irritating. Um, so we're going to produce, I think, on two of my tiles. Confirm. I can produce on, yeah, maximum of two. So we're going to produce two more workers, and we're going to produce some... What's the cheapest thing I can do? We'll go with bread this time. Next round, I can move two more workers onto the bread, have three sitting there, produce again, and then start enlisting recruits for them passive perks. Okay, so let's move once more. So, we'll move two characters again. You, you're going to go over to here. Do I need three bread and two? Yeah, and you're going to go over here. Thus ending the movement turn. Nords are producing. Rusviets are trading for bread. And then paying oil to upgrade. 
These guys are moving. I'm not sure who these guys are. The Crimea. Crimea using the little underground transport system to go all the way up here. And then they're upgrading. They're all in the second half of their turn. And Saxony producing more. Has anyone got any stars yet? No, I don't have to have any star envy. That's good. Because I'm going to go and produce now. And I can produce on two things. So I'm going to produce on you and you. I now have maximum workers. And I have, once again, the first star on the board. But I also have three bread. And three bread will allow me to enlist recruits in my next turn. Which is what I'm going to do. Uh, I can't do anything with oil because I don't have any. So enter. And the key to this is to try and get the second tab activated. Your second turn. And I think it's probably, depending on where you start on the board, there are certain strategies that you can use to maximise uh, your effectiveness, to maximise the speed at which that happens. And I'm probably not doing them. I suspect there are strategy guides I could study for this sort of thing. Unfortunately, I have to play about five to ten games a day, new games, because of the work that we do over from Pokemon.com, which is where I live. I am the video guy over there so if you head over to pocket gamers youtube channel you find uh, new reviews for games one went up yesterday one's about to go up in about an hour uh, and so i'm i was playing sky gamblers today and all i just play loads of stuff so you don't get to zero in on the one thing unfortunately much as i'd love to so i've got a star is anyone else no right so if we end the game here then uh, i i i did a did a win that's uh is that alright? No? Uh, Mamaxo says, Hello. Hi there. Question about trade action. Why is it not available to trade on different territories with your workers? Trade on different territories with your workers. Do you mean trade workers between characters? Or do you mean... Because the trade action, the idea is you pay coin and then you can just generate two of any resource that you want. So you're saying, can't you? Split resources one by one. As in split the resources between the individual workers or the individual tiles? Because I think you can generate different resources uh, if you want to. Anyway, where am I? I've got the the eight workers now. I've got three bread. So I ideally want to enlist some people so I can move. So I'm going to move people off of this worker tile because it's a waste of my time having all three of them here. So I'm going to put you over to here. I'm going to put you over to here as well. I don't really need anyone sitting here. It's kind of pointless. And I'm going to enlist. One, two, three. And I can use this now to get enlist bonuses whenever someone upgrades, enlist bonuses whenever somebody recruits, whenever someone builds or does some enlisting of their own. I'll get additional combat cards. So what do I want to go with first? I think I might go with popularity because I'm always running low. Although clearly I am also in need of fortifying as well. So, And I'm going to go for a one-off bonus here. And I'm going to go for power. I need to be fortified because I was down to basically nothing in turn. Between two territories where your workers were. So trading action and splitting resources between two territories where your workers were. Not sure I 100% follow if the puzzled expression. I'm probably misunderstanding. I'm sure the error is my end. Uh, Mamaxo there. I might do a trade and we can see exactly what you mean. They're going to go ahead and upgrade again. They've been doing this since we... No, don't apologize for your bad English. Believe me, your bad English is, is much better than what whatever your native language is if I were to attempt it. I suck. My partner is a uh, Colombian, and so she speaks Spanish and German, half German as well, and all manner of languages. And I dabble in a bit of Spanish, un poquito español, but I can't do a great deal. I, I'm just not gifted at languages. So, as much as I'd really love to be, I don't do speaking good in not English. 
Uh, let me see. So what can I do now? I've got no resources left. I think production is on the on the cards here, isn't it? And if I produce, I can also build something immediately afterwards. So let me... Oh, it's oil, though. That's the problem, isn't it? That is the problem. I can only produce on two territories. That's fine. Let's produce. Confirm. Make me some bread. Make me some wood bits. I still can't do anything with that. I have to end my turn. Nuts. And there you go. There's the old recruit bonuses paying off because I recruited someone. That's me getting some passive power because the Nordic have taken an action. I like that. Sitting here doing nothing. Getting power for it. Fantastic. Bit of production going over there in the Rusfiet. Who's got some stars? Surely. Still just me with stars? Oh, they got a lot of power off the back of that. Look at that. Eleven. Ooh. See, everyone ends up with a lot more assets than me. This is, my, this is why I am failing early on, I think. Because I seem to be spending a lot more than I'm generating. I need to find a way to generate stuff early on. And it's tough. I'm randomizing the boards. Maybe I should pick a specific board going in. You know what I mean? That might be the smart play. But at the moment, I'm just leaving it to the game to distribute what it what it wants to, so I get a different experience every time. Maybe I should choose a preference. Okay, I'm going to choose the move option. Actually, no, I'm just going to gain a coin. Let's just gain a coin. I don't want to move at the moment. There we go. And I'm going to produce. We're going to enlist. One, two, three bits of bread. And then that will allow me to... Let me see. Do I want popularity or coins? I'm going to go with popularity. Because I've got none at the moment. And get a one-off boost of popularity at the same time. And another round of applause. Lovely. End my turn. Aha! Right. When you trade, you gain two resources and place them on any territory you control with at least one worker. So you're asking if you... Instead of dumping all the resources onto a single tile with a worker, you can't say, oh, I'll put one bit of bread here and one bit of metal here and one bit of wood over here on three separate tiles. In the digital version, you can choose only one territory. So I do you mean that in the... Uh, this, is, this might be why I was getting confused, because I have never played the physical game. I've only ever played the digital version. So for me, that's the standard. I wasn't even aware you could do that. So in the analog version, the board game, you can divide them up between like three different workers, three different resources on three different tiles, yeah? Saxony upgrading. As for why, I'm not sure. I might ask Asmodee. Because we do these streams in conjunction with them. Obviously, that's why I'm on the, on the Asmodee channel, but... They are, of course, the experts when it comes to the production of the games and everything. So if that is a rule in the analog game, I'd be very interested to find out why. Because we've done a lot of these. It's always novel to find out exactly why people make certain changes. Why they've decided to do one thing and not another. And why, when they translate the real game, when they suddenly put it in physical... Uh, take it from the physical realm over into the digital realm, it makes things different. They can't take all the rules over. Some things just don't work when you take them uh, take them online, for example. Right, so I've got three bits of wood here. I can produce if I want to, but I think I'm going to go ahead and build a monument. And I'm going to... I can either bolster my power or get an action card. I'm going to bolster power. It's the only way to go. And I'm going to build... Because I get three coins off the back of that. Building is a big cash generator. One, two, three. And we're going to build ourselves some more power, I think. And we're going to put it here. Got three cash off the back of that. One popularity. 
Still the only person with a star on the table. Surprising. So I'm guessing, Mamaxo, that you come from the real physical game. How long does it take to play? If you've played the, the real one, I'm really curious because it's quite intensive, it feels like, when you play it digitally. Even the digital game lasts an hour if you're playing with, like, two people or three people. So when you're playing it, like, sitting around a table with, with your friends doing the board game version, I imagine that takes a fair while to, to get to the end. Look at how much power they get bolstered, though. They get, like, three power when they're bolstering. It's frustrating. So I'm not getting it. And yes, I am jealous. So what are you going to do about it? Right. So what did we do last turn? We built ourselves a monument and got a bunch of cash. Good. What we probably need to do now is start producing again. And I can maybe... It's either movement or production, really. I don't have any oil, and that's annoying me. I need to cross the barrier, but in order to get out from behind this landlocked position I'm in, I need to build mechs. And mechs are super expensive for me. So, I'm just going to produce. So, give me bread. Give me wood. Carry on. Their trading resources. I'll need to start trading if I want to build a mech eventually, but I need to get onto some metal. The Rusviet seem to have a lot of assets. Bit concerned. In Saxony have a ton of cash. Hmm. Full players are experienced. 60 to 80 minutes of full players. Okay, so not too bad. Right about the same time then. Because sometimes the digital versions, they can really speed the process up. Right, do we want to build another monument? Do we want to enlist or generate coins? I think I'm going to... I get so much cash for building monuments, though. So much cash. <laughs> I'm money hungry. Um, but I want to win a list. I like those passive boosts. So here we go. We'll just gain one coin. And we're going to go and enlist. One, two, three. And we're going to enlist and get ourselves. Do I want cash or do I want battle cards? I want cash at this point. Give me some sweet cash. And that one cash bonus. Accept. There we go. We'll end our turn. Upgrading up there in the Nordics, getting themselves some new, I don't know, skis. Whatever it is that the Nords do up there. The Rusviets have got mm, way too much stuff for my liking. Then we've got the Crimea, I think, the horses. Stepping out. Still in their own little boundaries. I think the only person who's jumped over the lake so far is... Oh, no, no, that's... I tell a lie. Crimea have already hopped over. Using the tunnels. And Saxony are out and about. Dropping down mechs like psychos. It's always mechs. I didn't get to build enough when I played as them, but that's what they do. That's what they're really good at. Okay, then. I'm going to go ahead and build that extra structure. I'll pay money. I'll bolster my power. And then we're going to go ahead and build using the three remaining assets I have here. And we're going to bolster our love. 
and we're going to put it here because there's no sense in having the windmill which acts as a worker by the way on the tile which controls worker production because I've already got too many too many workers Someone must have a... No! How has no one still got a star on the table? Baffling. Well, I'm not first, but I'm not quite so far behind as I was in the other games. Even the, you know, medium and low AIs, they're not a pushover in this game. I mean, there's such a range of possibilities what type of engine you build, the layout of the production plates down here, the way these are all shuffled about every turn, the different individual qualities of each faction, of which there are different uh, bonuses and buffs, plus the individual objectives you get. There's like such a range of possibility. Okay then. Now these guys are edging Closer, closer, ever closer to me. And I have no defences right now, which is really problematic because I haven't been able to get across the water because I can't get across the water. So in order to make a mech, I would have had to, like, just trade for tons of steel and make one. I don't know if Saxony can clear the water. I assume one of these are water-based... So they've hopped over. No problem. Alright. Now I can produce again. Though I still can't make any oil. I might get my hero character out. It might be time to move. I'm concerned this guy's going to jump on here. Although, I mean, I don't have any assets on it at the moment, so... The real harm in it. Let me. I'm gonna trade. So this is the point where you would like to be able to split them if you could, Maxo. I'm gonna pop it up here because he's a bit too close to my liking, uh, and I'm gonna one steel and two steel. There we go. My feeling is that guy's about to jump onto my tile and start battling. This fills me with rage. Look, the green screen makes my water transparent. That's nice. I mean, of course it does, but... Good to know. Recruit bonuses for the Nordics. Crimea are going to move some folks back via that little tunnel. It's funny, when I started playing this game in early access, they didn't show you what your opponent did in real time. The animations wouldn't play out. You get a little summary on the side. But you wouldn't get all of this popping up to notify you what was happening. And it's amazing how much better introducing that UI stuff made the game. Seeing what they're doing in real time really makes you feel like you're playing against other people. Even though it's just an AI. Big improvement. Saxony, you're enlisting and getting a bunch of cash. Hey! Right, where did they get their... They got it from... Combat victory. Oh, they've got the star for, for beating someone in combat. Uh, fair play. Fair enough. Now, I can't make another trade this round. I can, however, produce, which is what I'm going to do now. So, give me that bread and give me that wood. Can't perform a second action, so I got to suck it up. Uh, 
drawing near to the end of this stream. I won't be able to finish this game, obviously. But, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, do follow us. Give us a little click. A subscribe over here because we tend to do these things on a weekly basis. We don't know what we're going to be doing going forward from here. How the schedule uh, may change in the future. But we've generally been doing it on a Tuesday afternoon in the UK, starting at 5 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, GMT, uh, which is about 9 a.m. Pacific and 12 midday Eastern if you're in the States and other times from around the world. But do give us a little follow if you like your board games digital. Hey, look at that. Passive bonuses. That's what I like to see. Okay, having produced that stuff, I've got a variety of options now. I can pay, trade, and build a mech. I can move my guys out and enlist. That's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to move. I'm going to move you out onto here, just in case he gets any ideas. I want to be able to put up a fight. I've got enough power to fight him back, so that's good. And... Do I want to move anyone else? Not really. I'd love to move some people over here, but I can't. So, I'll end the movement turn. Yes. And now I'm going to go straight into enlisting. One, two, three. My final enlisting. Just the one left. With that final enlisting bonus. And a second star on the board. Making me level with Saxony right now. A lot of people got more cash than me. And more love than me. I'm second most powerful on the board. That's pretty good. And we're joint joint first in terms of stars. This game's going a bit better than the first one. Annoyingly, it's going to be the one I can't finish in the stream. But uh, it is doing a bit better. I am doing a bit better. Damn it. Go back and watch, I think, the very first stream I did of this. Where I... Uh, I pwn as, as Polonia. Good times. Anyhow, if you have enjoyed what you've seen, like I say, give me a, a little follow here down below. We will let you know via the Pocket Gamer Twitter stream. So go and follow pocketgamer.com over there on the Twitter. Check out the new website as well because it is sick. We've got a brand new design bringing it well up to date and it looks lovely. And the Pocket Gamer YouTube channel too. And of course, all of Asmodee's channels over there as well. There is another Asmodee channel uh, dealing with board games, uh, sort of actual physical board games as well as their uh, digital versions. And they cover a lot of the board game shows and conferences. So if you find them over on Twitch as well, you'll get uh, lovely updates whenever they go live. And like hundreds of thousands of people will tune in for that stuff. It's, it's really, really good. Go and give it a look. But in the meantime, I'm going to go over here and win with the camera off. Because, you know, I was just about to win. Obviously. Uh, and I hope you saw something you liked. Go and play a cool board game. And I will hopefully see you next time. Take it easy, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.